If you want to learn how to make these realistic lighting settings in Roblox Studio, make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out how to do it. And before we start, make sure to go check out my Patreon for other systems and models you can buy. It's first link in the description and of course, enjoy the video. So I actually already made like a bit of a map, so we got a few trees and some grass. But of course we do need to edit a few things because this doesn't really look that good. So when I play you can see that like, I mean, sure this does look a bit realistic but it's not what we're aiming for here. So let's make this much better. For the start you can see that the leaves and the grass is, it's like this is a low key trash color for the grass. It's like kind of yellowish, I don't know, I don't really like it. So go to the terrain, then go to the material colors, drop it down and go to the grass. And I will change it to maybe 75,110,65. Okay, so this is a much darker color, so it looks more realistic. And it's also aligned with the leaves on the trees, so it looks much better. And you can also do the same for the leafy grass if you want, just so it kind of matches. So open the editor, we can go to the paint and select the leafy grass. And I will paint it a bit here, so we can actually see how it looks. And then I just need to basically match the colors. So I guess something like this, maybe a bit more green. Okay, so that's the first step, just matching out the colors of the terrain making it look a bit prettier than usual. Now I can close the terrain and go to the lighting settings. So we'll actually do a lot of things with these lighting properties and stuff inside of the lighting folder. So right in the properties, we have the first thing ambient. So I wanna bring this uh, a bit down actually. So maybe something like this, so it's kind of darker. Uh, brightness, you can leave either three or two. It really depends on like other light sources in your game. Currently, I don't have any here, so Maybe 3 is good enough. Then we have color shift bottom and color shift top. We are going to be touching this because, I don't know, it's just not really necessary. Environment diffuse scale. So we'll drop this down to 0.5. You can see that it kind of acts on the darker colors. So if I bring it up, it becomes lighter. And then if I drop it down to 0.5 again, it gets like these darker shadows. Then we have specular scale, which I will just put to... Maybe 0.8. Then below that, we of course have global shadows and you will want to turn these on, otherwise it looks pretty weird actually. Then we have lighting style and if I zoom in on this like shadow of the tree, I switch it to realistic, you can see that it kind of changes. And yeah sure, it becomes like a bit different and honestly this might actually even look better, but realistic is like obviously should be more realistic. Then for the outdoor ambient, well, we're going to be dropping this as well as the ambient. Uh, so something like this, so it's a bit darker again. Shadow softness, you can leave it at 0.2 and this really depends on how you like it. So you can either maybe put it to 1 so the shadows are really soft or to zero and everything is really sharp. Then down here we have clock time, which I'm not going to be actually moving right now, but this is basically just to move the sun. And then exposure compensation, I'll just up this a bit, so to 0.15. And now what you're going to need to do is you have atmosphere here by default, and you can either use this or you can delete it. And you can see that it kind of gets a bit weird, but then go back to lighting and now you have the fog options. So I will uh, color the fog, so it's like this light blue color. Fog end, obviously we can't actually see it because it's ending really far away. So you can just put it to a thousand. And now you can see that it's kind of covered, so we just need to up the fog start to a hundred. And now it looks much better. So again, you can either uh, delete the atmosphere or leave it. After that, we have bloom, which I will put to 0.1 and also size to maybe 50 and the threshold you can leave on too. Now we'll change the depth of field which is again a default but it's not actually enabled by default so enable it so you can actually kind of see the effect that it has and I will up this to 0.2 and now you can see that in the distance it, it's kind of gotten blurry. If I drop it down to 0.1 again it's gone so I will raise this to 0.2. Focus distance 0.1 and in focus radius I will actually adjust this more than a double so 70 just so we can actually see clearly a bit far away and then near intensity I'll put to 0.2 last thing that is by default is sun rays I'll just up this to 0 0.025 and then let's just get in the position okay so you can see the sun rays right here so we have intensity which I just adjusted and also the spread so I will just up that as well and of course, if you like make this a lot, it's going to be really, really bright, which I don't really recommend. So 
keep it on the low side definitely but you also don't want it to be zero because then it will just look kind of weird it will look like the sun isn't even the sun but just a bright dot in the sky and now the last thing we need to add into the lighting is a color correction which is not actually by default here so add the color correction and i'll just adjust it so the fog uh, kind of matches with it so something like this i think is good and you can also adjust the brightness i'll put it to 0 0.05 and then contrast 0.2 and now you can see that the kind of the shadows are popping more and the colors as well. So if you want, you can maybe make this a lot, but again, it won't really look realistic. It just looks kind of fried. Even though this like thingy, this bar is maximum one, I think you can actually type it. So yeah, you can pretty much fry your whole game. But yeah, for the realism, I'll leave it to 0.2. And of course the saturation. So this is just to brighten up the colors, but you don't want them to be too bright because this is more of like a cartoony look. So I'll put it at 0.2, same as the contrast. Now open the workspace again and go to the terrain. And this is actually something I forgot to do. So we have the grass length and for me personally, this uh, tall grass doesn't really look that good, so I will shorten it a lot to 0.2, and in my opinion, it looks much prettier now. And if you select the workspace itself, and then scroll down a bit, you can actually find global wind setting, so open it up, and you can change the directions of the wind, so currently it's kind of blowing just like slightly, but if you want, you can like adjust it, so as you can see, 2 is like a bit stronger, I think the maximum is like 20, so if you put 10, it's like blowing the wind in that direction. And of course, if you want to like spin it around a bit and change directions, just uh, change one of these others. So you can see that it kind of rotated. And I think this looks actually pretty good when it's like blowing the wind. And of course, we could add maybe a script for this for like waving leaves. But in my case, I wouldn't really recommend that, especially if you have like meshes for leaves and there's like a lot of them. And then if you have like a hundred or a, maybe even a thousand trees, I don't know if you can fit that in your game. But if you have a lot of trees, then it will just create a lot of lag. But if you guys want a tutorial on that, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe and comment down below so I know to actually make it. And this is our final showcase, so it looks much more realistic than before. I will put it on the screen before and after. Okay, so you can see like this, I think this is the prettiest time where you can look at the realistic graphics. So we have the, this like short uh, grass that is blowing in the wind, we have trees, we have sun rays coming through and stuff like that. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment down below on what I should make a tutorial next and thanks for watching.